timber off for their, for their four foot wood. And the brush took over and the, brush the took rabbits over and then the rabbits took over. Mm -hmm. When we moved to Hazel down there, it was, oh, let's see, 44. I, kinda, I got an old single shot 22 I, I had. They stole it out of the back of that Volvo one time. Mm -hmm. But I had a single shot. In the winter time, they used to go. And your grandmother, my mother, she told me to go shoot a bunch of rabbits, and she said, "Don't use a shotgun. Use your 22 or the full shot." And I go out. <coughs> February, they'd come out and set outside their holes. She wasn't asking to go and shoot five or six or seven in the last half hour before dark. Mm. Over there, the hazel down along the railroad tracks, they had uh, holes under all them tie piles and everything. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Plus, there was a lot of other game, you know, partridges, squirrels, gray squirrels. I don't know if you've ever ate a squirrel pot pie or mm. probably not. No, I'd love to though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, the partridge today has got to be almost a thing of the past. Mm. There's not very many of them anymore. They're good. Partridge? Partridge? It's a bird. It's really? Yeah. Kind of partridge. Kind of like Rup grouse. grouse is what the real name of them, grouse. What does it look like? <laughs> like a miniature chicken. Oh, small. When they take off, it, it makes a heck of a worm noise. <clears throat> Mm. Lots of times they sit right there still until you get from there up on them and then when they go out you got to get your wits about you after you got the hell scared out of you. <laughs> you make a the racket. They take off and make a lot of noise. Brrr, mm. Really roar. Mm. Mm. That wasn't much meat though. Oh, they were weighed about, probably not the big one was maybe two pounds. Oh, okay. Live weight. But mm. My mother used to take it, and she'd uh, take some water and boil it, and then pick the meat off the bones, mm. and then cream it. We used to eat it on toast or something like that. Mm. that cream it? Cream it with a white sauce. Oh, put cream on it. Like a, a roux that's made with butter and flour, and then oh. you put milk in it. <coughs> it's a white sauce. Mm. <coughs> So how did you guys prepare the squirrel? That, again, you skinned it and, and cut it up and cooked it and picked the meat off the bones and threw the bones away and saved enough meat till you got enough to make your pot pie. Pot pie? Like a chicken pot pie or... What is that? The pie, it's an actual pie crust oh. on the bottom. Oh, I and see. And the meat, vegetable, gravy mixture is inside inside and then another crust on the top mm. and then it's baked in the oven mm, sounds like good eating <laughs> well in them days you you pretty much had to this is back from from the early 40s up until well 54 55 because i can remember coming home from and taking my gun and going up and setting the beech nuts with it. And getting the squirrels. A lot of times the partridges would fly in there to feed on them too. There wasn't a lot of meat available. They had rations because of World War II. Mm. So. During World War II, when the meat, butter, all that was rationed, if you didn't have coupons, even though you had money, you couldn't buy it. Mm. So. We ate a lot that would have called illegal venison. Mm -hmm. You weren't supposed to shoot it, but if you were going to have any meat, you had to have something. Mm -hmm.
didn't have quite a lot of money to buy it, a whole house. Right. And I don't know what they sold for in them days, but my dad used to raise a couple of pigs every year. Mm. And we'd butcher them. Yeah. I used to raise them myself and because of the fact that it took, took money to buy them, and a lot of times I didn't have that kind of money to buy them. Mm. So I'd raise them and butcher them. I butchered one around deer season. Right. And then I used a lot of the venison to make sausage and what have you. I made, took care of the, old, the pork. I made my own bacon and hams mm. and all that. Mm. You pretty much had to be jack of all trades, master. And I lived over in Hazel. I, I traveled to Roscoe. I went to school in Roscoe. I graduated from Roscoe in 1958. Mm. <coughs> and in those days, the bus picked you up down in Hazel and one brought you up on top of the hill to meet the big bus. They had a, somebody with a like a four-wheel drive RV, Wesley, last name was, he used to bring the kids down from way up on Burnt Hill, mm -hmm. down to right there where the pull-off is, where he went up to Ann's, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and then he'd come down in Hazel and picked us up, brought us up to there. Oh, because the big bus was too down, big? Well, to it didn't go down into Hazel for, there was only like eight, nine kids down in there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> So it wasn't because of the weather or no, not being able to make it up the hill. You didn't. In them days, they put chains on. Mm -hmm. You very seldom missed them days because of bad weather. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, they just the bus didn't. driver would just stop the bus and get out and put chains on? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Well, you wouldn't find a bus driver would be willing to do that well, today, right? Come with a job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> In them days, you know how they sanded the roads? I remember yeah. you telling me a couple of guys with shovels. Two guys up on the back of a truck shoveling the sand off my hand. Right. Mm. There was no spreaders yet in them mm. days. That's, that was how you took care of the highway. <laughs> This is my friend, Dee. You. you see that? You see my friend? 